Hello everybody. So we are back with equations and inequalities. And today what we're going to be looking at and, and kind of reviewing is um, whether a statement is true or false. Okay, so we're going to take a look at and kind of expand upon that and kind of look at, well, what values would make this true? What values would make this false? Okay, so um, if you would get your lesson 33 sheet um, and the questions are right above here and then we have our equations underneath. So first of all, it asks what values does the variable have to represent for the equation to equal a true number sentence or a true number equation. All right, so we've got y plus 6 equals 16. So the number sentence I know is true if I put, and now I have to figure out what value does the y have to be. So for it to be true, we would have to have y equaling, and this is plus 6. So in order to get rid of this and to make the y by itself, I have to minus 6 on both sides. So 16 minus 6 would give me a value of 10 for this to be a true statement. All right, now, because this says equals to, and you'll refer back to what we talked about um, uh, on Monday, I believe, if it's an equal sign, then there's only, only gonna be one value that makes the statement true. So 10 is the only value that can make this statement true. So the second question says, what value does the variable have to represent for the equation or inequality to represent a false number sentence? Well, a false number sentence would be any number other than 10. So any number other than 10 is a false statement. Okay, so any number other than 10. Now that is true when you have the equal sign. Now down here for letter B, we have an inequality. So with this inequality, we could have a possibility of more than one answer for Y. Now could we plug 10 in here and make that, and that would be a correct answer? Well, let's take a look. Y, we put the 10, 10 plus six is greater than 16. Well, we already said up here that 10 plus six is equal to 16 and there's no, it's not greater than or equal to. So 10 would be an incorrect statement. So we could not put 10 in there in the place of y. So the number sentence is true only if the number that we place in here is greater than 10. So if we try a number lower than 10, let's try nine. So y, we'll replace that with nine. Nine plus six, well nine plus six equals 15. And 15 is not greater than 16. So let's try eight. Eight plus six. Well, eight plus six is 14. And 14 is not greater than 16. So we, we said any value greater than 10. So let's try 11. So if y was 11, then 11 plus six would equal 17, and 17 is greater than 16. So any number greater than 10 is a true statement. So the second question is, well, what makes this, what would make this statement false? Any number less than 10 is a false statement. All right. So what we have here is um, the inequality can have more than one answer, whereas the equations with equal signs only have one value as an answer. All right, 
So let's take a look at the next inequality. And this one you'll notice has a greater than or equal to. So if we have y, let's go ahead and put, let's go ahead and try y plus six is greater than or equal to 16. So let's go ahead and put the 10 in there. Okay, we had the 10 when it was an equal to sign. So let's go ahead and try that because we do have the equal to there. So 10 plus six is greater than or equal to 16. Well, let's see if that's true. Go ahead and write the answer out here. Is 16 greater than or equal to 16? Yes. So 10 would give me um, a correct response. All right, so what about, so 10 works. What about nine? So let's do nine plus six is greater than or equal to 16. So we put replaced y with nine. So we've got 15. Is this a true statement? 15 is greater than or equal to 16. Well, no, that's not a true statement. So we can't go lower than 10, I don't think. Let me go ahead and try eight just to be sure. Okay, so I've got eight plus six is 14. 14 is greater than or equal to 16, no. So can we go higher than 10? Well, let's try 11. 11 plus six is 17, and 17 is greater than or equal to 16, yes. Okay, let's try one more just to be certain. Let's try 12. 12 plus six equals 18, and 18 is greater than or equal to 16, yes. So it could be 10. So it can be 10 or any number greater than 10 would give us a true statement. I'm gonna rewrite this since my pen kind of ran out there at the end. Okay, um, 10 or any number greater than 10 Um, is a true statement. So what would make that statement false? Well, remember when we put 9 here, 9 made it false. When we put 8 here, 8 made it false. I'll bet if we put 3 there, 3 would make it false. So any number less than 10, so any number less than 10 is false. All right, so now that we've established that with letter C. All right, so now we've got 3G equals 15. Now remember what we said about equals. Up here, we only had one answer that was true. So I've got 3G equals 15. So I have to get this G by itself. So I multiply three times G. So in order to get rid of it, I'm gonna to need to do the opposite. So I'm gonna be dividing, all right? So now when I do three divided by three, well that equals one, well one G is the same as G. And 15 divided by three is five. So I know here that, um, G would equal five, so five, um, what, uh, G equals five is a true statement, or gives a true statement. All right, so could I put any other number in there? Well, would four work? No, because 15 divided by three isn't four. What about nine? Well, 15 divided by three is at nine. So if it's any number other than five, it's a false statement. Any number, so any number we try other than five gives a false statement. When it's equal to, <clears throat> There's only one value that it could be. All right, so now we have an inequality. We have 3G is less than 15. 
So now we have to put values in here that create a true statement here. Now this is an inequality, so we can have, probably have more than one answer. <clears throat> okay, would five work? If we put five here in the place of G, would we get a number that is less than 15? Well, three times five is 15, and 15 is not less than 15, so five does not work. All right, what about six? Would six give a true statement? Three times six is 18, and 18 is not less than 15. So that's not a true statement either. So when we're going higher, um, let's try seven. Three times seven is 21. 21 is not less than 15. So going higher doesn't get me a correct answer. So let's try going lower than five. So let's try four. Does four work? Well, three times four is 12, and 12 is less than 15. Four works. Let's go and try three. Well, three times three is nine, and nine is less than 15. The scientist in me says I've got to try it three times. All right, three times two. Three times two is six. Six is less than 15. So it appears that any number less than five gives the correct answer. So any number less than five gives the correct answer or a true statement. So when we were going the opposite way, remember when we tried six here and we tried seven here, it was giving us um, wrong answers. So any number over five, any number more than five is false. That gives us a false number sentence. All right, now this time they're taking and adding the less than or equal to. All right, so this time, could we put a five in there? Could we put five here and it be a true statement? Well, we've got three times, we've got three times five equals 15. So is 15 less than or equal to 15? Well, yeah, it is. 15 is equal to 15. So five would work this time. Hmm, all right, well, what about four? Does four work? Well, three times four is 12. Is 12 less than or equal to 15? Yes, it is. Um, what about three? Three times three is nine. Nine is less than or equal to 15. All right, so we've got, gone lower and lower works. Let's try to go higher than five. Three times six is 18. 18 is not less than or equal to 15. So it's five, um, any number five and um, less. So <clears throat> five and less than five give a true statement. Any number greater than five is false. Okay, so you're starting to see how these inequalities work. All right, so we went through example one, and this time we're going to take it and put a little different twist on it. So I'm going to start with example number two in just a minute. I'm going to let you finish writing. <clears throat> so the things that we can kind of glean or take from this information is when we have an equal to sign, there's going to be one value that will be the correct answer. Everything else will make a false statement. If we have a greater than or equal to, uh, greater than or equal to or less than or equal to sign, there's going to be multiple answers that will be true. 
And if there's a greater than or a less than sign, there will also be multiple answers that can be true or make the statement true. All right, so go ahead and get example two out. If you need to rewind and watch some of this again to um, finish those up, you can do that. Um, we're going to go ahead and start these. All right. So we've got, um, it says, which of the following numbers, if any, so they're telling you that there may not be any of them, if any, make the equation or inequality true. And so they give us a set of numbers. We've got 0, 3, 5, 8, 10, and 14. So my mathematical brain tells me that I want to try, when I start plugging these in, I'm probably going to start in the middle and then either work my way lower or work my way higher, just kind of like what we did with the other page. All right, so I have m plus 4 equals 12. So I've got m plus 4 equals 12, and I need to put values in the place of m. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to start with 5. 5 plus 4 equals 12. No, because that equals 9. So I know that 5 is not going to work for m. So let me go one lower. 3. 3 plus 4 equals 7, not 12. So 3 is not going to work. So now I know 0 is not going to work either because 5 and lower than 5 don't work. So now I can go higher. So let's try 8. Well, 8 plus 4 is 12. So that works. So the 8 works here. So m can equal 8. I already know that. Could m equal 10? Well, 10 plus 4 is 14. M cannot equal 10. Now, what I already know about equations that have an equal sign is there's only one answer. So since I've already got my answer, I can write down with certainty that m equals 8. That's it. That's all. That's all she wrote. All right. So the equal to ones are going to be the easier ones. So I'm looking down through here. So here's another equal to, and here's another equal to. So I know these two are only going to have one correct answer. Now I've got B, D, and F that can have multiple answers. So we're moving on to B now. So I've got M plus 4 is less than 12. Well, I already know that if I plug 8 in here, 8 is going to make it equal to 12. So if I go higher, I'm putting more numbers on there, and so it's going to be, it's not going to work because it's going to be more than 12. So I already know, I know um, 8, um, m equals 8 to get 12. So more than 8 won't work. So I already know, I can already take off the plate 8, 10, and 14. So I've already got some of the work done for me, and I'm, I was only using mental math. So now, can I put 10 in the place here? You know what? I have to backtrack that. I was thinking greater than, so I apologize. <sighs> Don't you love it when teachers make mistakes? All right, so I know, let me backtrack this. I know that M equals eight to get 12. So I looked at that and I thought, what in the heck are you doing, Mrs. V? You've got to apologize to your kids because you made a mistake. All right, so I know that M equals eight to get 12. So if I add more to it, then I'm going to get the wrong answer. So I've got to take away from that. All right, so M, if I put uh, 5 in the place of M, then I'm going to get a number that is less than 12. So 5 will work. So I know 
m could equal 5. Now remember, this is an inequality, so I can have more than one answer. All right, what about 3? Could I put 3 in the place? Well, 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 is less than 12. Yes, 3 will work too. Could I put 0 in the place of m? 0. 0 plus 4 is 4. 4 is less than 12. So 0 will work. So of this set of numbers, now that's not saying that there aren't other numbers that will work. It's just we're only looking at the numbers from this set. So from this set, m um, could equal 0, 3, 4, 5 to give a correct response. Okay, now moving on to the next one. F minus 4 equals 2. Now, what do we know about equals to, equal to sign? There's only one response. All right. F minus 4 equals 2. Okay. So, um, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, all right, if I have 5 here, okay, 5 minus 4 equals 1, hmm. 3, that's going to give me a negative number. So 0, 3, and 5 don't work. What about 8? Eight? 8 minus 4 equals... Nope. That doesn't work. Hmm. All right. Let's try F equaling 10. 10 minus 4 equals 2. Well, you know what? From this set, there are no numbers that work. So I'm going to write here um, no numbers from the set make the number sentence true. So sometimes that happens and you need to look at those carefully and figure out whether you can get a true statement or not. All right. So this time we're going to do f minus 4 is greater than 2. All right? So we're going to start plugging numbers in. So f minus 4 is greater than 2. Well, we already noticed something about this set. We already noticed when we subtract 0 or 3, we get negative numbers. So we can take those off the plate right away because it didn't make sense even with the equal to sign. All right. <clears throat> so now we've got 5. If we put 5 in the place of, of f, 5 minus 4 is greater than 2. Well, I know that's not true because that answer is 1. Could I put 8 in the place? 8. 8 minus 4 is 4, and 4 is greater than 2. Okay, so f could equal 8. What about 10? Would 10 give a true statement? Well, 10 minus 4 is 6, and 6 is greater than 2. So 10 would give a true statement. What about 14? 14 minus 4 is 10, and 10 is greater than 2. So there are four numbers from this set that will give a true statement. So f could equal 8, 10, or 14 to give a true statement. All right, letter E, half H equals eight. Now, there's an equal to sign there. So, how many answers could we have? Just one, that's right. All right, so we have Half H equals 8. All right. So I'm looking at these numbers and I'm thinking, okay, so half of 8 is 1, or is 4, sorry. Um, half of 10, hmm, half of 10 would be 5. That doesn't equal 8. Half of 14 equals 7. So what if I multiply something and I take it and I chop it in half, 
what number could I place in here? Because remember, there's only one answer that would give me eight. Well, that number would be 16. H would have to equal 16. Well, 16's not in the set. So again, just like we had with letter C, no numbers from the set give a correct answer. Again, sometimes that happens. And you'll notice in one of the papers I gave you for your blizzard bag, that was the case. There was one uh, problem where none of the responses gave a correct answer. All right, now if we have half H is greater than or equal to eight. All right, so let's put, um, let's try some of the larger numbers. So if we put 10 in the place of H, 10, so half of 10 is greater than or equal to eight. So half of 10 would be five and five is not greater than or equal to eight. So um, let's try 14. Half of 14 is seven. Seven is not greater than or equal to eight. So again, is if we go lower, we're gonna get um, responses that are less. So again, with half H is greater than or equal to eight, we have no answer or none of the numbers give a true statement. All right. So we're taking a look at equalities and inequalities. So one thing that we know is when there's an equal to sign, there will be one correct answer. If there's a greater than less than, or a greater than equal to or less than equal to, which are called inequalities, then we could have multiple answers that are true. Now, given a set of numbers, sometimes you will get none as the response because none of the answers will give you a true statement. All right, so what I want you to do this evening, <clears throat> I want you to do a practice exercise for the inequalities, and it looks just like example two, and then tomorrow we'll come back and check those together, and then I will have a, a um, homework assignment for you to do from there. If you have any questions, like always, you can email or um, send me a text on Remind, and I will get back to you. All right. Keep watching, stay curious, and always keep learning.